Hey everyone, welcome to Popular Cruising. I'm your host Jason Leppert, and I recently sailed aboard the new Seaborn Venture in Greenland and Iceland on a mostly excellent expedition cruise. The luxury line seems to be not quite fully aware of its competition in some areas, while besting them in others, as I'll point out as we tour and review the ship deck by deck. Starting high on Deck 9 is Venture's Constellation Lounge. I just can't help it folks, I'm still a sucker for a traditional observation lounge. And this one also has an expansive wraparound deck. Inside is quite handsome, as the ship's interior design of rugged adventure meets luxurious comforts is established, complete with a convenient central bar, serving all-inclusive beverages I might add, and requisite wraparound windows. Briefly, if you haven't already done so, please feel free to subscribe to our channel. Thanks! The lounge here is also home to talented live music sets, from vocalists and guitarists, or pianists. And it's also where guests will find lovely afternoon tea time, as well as enjoying a wider array of savory finger sandwiches and sweet scones, of which Seaborn has some of the best. Not to mention further afternoon snacks to munch on in between other meals. Disappointingly, compared to those neatly tucked away on competing expedition ships, is the unsightly storage of Zodiac rigid inflatable boats, or ribs, right on deck, which precludes the presence of any additional pools or extra sun deck space. Although it is fascinating to watch the process of the crew craning them over the side to be deployed for daily outings. And there is still a bit of sun deck space surrounding the Zodiacs, as well as effectively a promenade deck that extends to the stern. Particularly lovely on deck nine are two whirlpools that cantilever a bit off the back of the ship for exquisite vistas while warming up from the chilly destination. Just imagine yourself relaxing here, and when you're ready to book your own Seaborne Expedition Cruise, we recommend doing so through our sponsor, Fairy Godmother Travel, who will magically take care of all your trip planning absolutely for free. To get your complimentary quote, click on the link right here, or call the phone number or message the email address below. Also servicing the whirlpools here is the Sky Bar, once again serving up included alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. Perhaps say a hot toddy or even a Guinness beer, as was my favorite while taking a jacuzzi soak. Meanwhile, just inside is the club, which serves an abbreviated selection of sashimi and sushi versus Seaborn's other ships, but that are equally tasty. I have to give props to the great signature cocktails here too. As to the venue itself, it's very stylish but half of these good-looking narrow chairs are actually uncomfortable. Much better, of course, are such breathtaking views outside, as well as excellent entertainers inside, like our friend Neil, seen here at the guitar and mic for a fun night of Beatles music, sometimes also backing the Broadway-style vocals of talented cruise director Brian. We'll next descend the architecturally beautiful atrium and aft stair and elevator lobbies to Deck 7, where the spa and wellness, as well as fitness centers are situated. There's also a back, partially shaded lounging deck, but unfortunately no further whirlpools or thalassotherapy pool as other ships have. The gym at least consists of a motion studio and an expected array of exercise equipment on the opposite side. But really, the only gem of the facility are its pair of scenic dry saunas. Otherwise, the space extends to typical treatment rooms for couples or individuals and to a small beauty salon that additionally has a welcome barber chair. Deck 7 is also where our veranda suite was located. As entry-level accommodations go, this is definitely one of the most comfortable, with everything from teddy bear-approved plush bedding to a handy wall clock, and especially two nightstands, each thankfully with one USB-C and one traditional USB charging port, and both US and European electrical plugs. Even our teddy bears and other stuffed animal friends got top-tier seaborne service, such as a hilarious set of stadium seating for a family-friendly movie night. Across from the foot of the bed is not only extra storage, but also another counter and more USB ports and electrical outlets. And farther up to the side is a mini bar with a fully stocked included fridge and collection of canteens, water bottles, and glassware, plus a vanity desk with mirrors, and yes, even more ports and plugs, across from which is a convenient raisable dining table and sofa where our included polarware was waiting for us upon embarkation. And no such suite would be complete without its inviting balcony. Back inside, storage further consists of a walk-in closet that honestly feels a bit cramped once filled with hanging clothes, as well as a separate drying closet, plus bonus wall hooks, 
before heading to the marble-clad bathroom with its own pair of door hooks. It's nice on paper to have a bathtub, especially when our great room stewardesses ready it again for our plush companions, as well as premium molten brown toiletries, wide sink basin, and well-spaced toilet. But the result is still a now, smaller than standard corner shower with much less room to maneuver in. I'd personally prefer this be larger without the tub. Then down on deck six is Seaborn Square, a hybrid venue that is part included coffee shop with other delicious snacks throughout the day. And of course, Seaborn's always great artisanal gelato. And also part cozy gathering space and lounge. And lastly, library and reception area. All of which feels more like a relaxing living room than the usual set of cruise ship desks. And the comforts continue to the outer deck with even more padded furnishings under cover. As well as loungers on the sun with dramatic views like these. As a fan of observation lounges, I was very pleased to find the bow lounge acting as a secondary one. Sitting even farther forward, again with lots of windows, as well as a side snack and drink station with self-serve munchies. Not unlike those at Seaborn Square, and as much as I love the three sets of screens that mirror the actual navigation ones on the bridge, including various charts and displays of the ship heading, they're unfortunately propped up such that they block a lot of the best views beyond. I'm hopeful these will be mounted flatter to the counter to fix the design flaw in a future dry dock. In any case, the open bow deck just in front is an ideal sightseeing spot where I filmed the ship's capable expedition staff during a photo op and lots of footage of Greenland in all its natural glory. The bow really was the place to be to get the very best perspectives of the fjords we navigated below a couple of teeny tiny looking jets overhead. Filled with loads of stunning ice sheets and several beautiful glaciers, both of the tidewater and hanging varieties. But it was the unique bow spree off the deck in particular that I most appreciated since it provided the awesome opportunity to look right over the bulbous bow as the PC-6 Ice Class Raid Adventure safely made contact with the ice, even turning this berg over with its impressive hull strength. In fact, it was this moment right here when we collided, again safely, into a large part of the sheet that we felt the ship reverberate before effortlessly pushing the ice away. And we were always on the lookout for wildlife, as much enjoyed taking shelter on flat ice or towering surfaces. But boy howdy was it that super cool bow spray that I spent the most time at myself. Heading down again to deck five is where the infinity pool gets a stern equivalent view to the front of the ship. And as seen on the sunny afternoon, sure had quite the panoramic vista of the snow-capped mountains seen in every direction, while taking a wet dip or just lounging dry. This aft patio is also where Seabarn hosted its signature included caviar event, featuring classic and regional gins among glacial ice and of course, delectable fish eggs with all the fixings. Admittedly, I went back for multiple passes as I thoroughly enjoyed the perfect platings, along with my glass of gin, and of course, also champagne. I sure could go for some of this right now. Just a bit farther forward is also the colonnade, adjacent to set outdoor patio, which encompasses another included bar and alfresco seating or inside is the ship's self-service buffet in the morning and midday. Breakfast items extended classic eggs, bacon, my favorite corned beef hash, and more. And lunches serve a wide variety of tasty proteins, sides, and even excellent pizza and calzones, plus desserts, and even more gelato. Then at night, dinners are fully served, alternating between Seaborn's Earth and Ocean concept and different themed evenings, like Italian night and courses such as traditional seared beef carpaccio, expertly prepared pesto pasta, so good that I ordered a second as my dessert, and most savory slow roasted veal osso Or the dramatically presented Earth and Ocean dinners are noteworthy for bread service of incredible bacon wrapped breadsticks, but otherwise less so for dishes that aren't quite as inspired as the concept would have you believe. 
internationally renowned chef Thomas Keller unfortunately does not have a presence on Venture, and the lack of his culinary finesse is somewhat apparent here and in the main dining room. To thoroughly explore all of the deck plan, level 5 is rounded out by a meeting room that works well for conferences as needed, or just the playful challenge of several available puzzles, or just as many timeless board games. Then let's take the atrium stairs down again to deck 4, where a neat, giant purple gem anchors the atrium just outside the ship's main restaurant. The venue is an excellent blend of classic and contemporary decor, and although it does not have the vaulted ceilings of other Seabarn ships, it does still manage to allude to them with bright, geometric lighting. Cuisine here mostly lives up to Seabarn's standard of fine dining, but not quite to the level of aforementioned Thomas Keller, with traditional courses such as these, from a specially ordered surf and turf to a marvelous hot Grand Marnier souffle. I would be remiss if I didn't also point out Seaborn's updated room service fare, which is definitely headed in the right direction, with an extensive charcuterie board, none other than Snake River Farms prime cheeseburger, and a simply outstanding banana split. On the opposite end of Deck 4 is the studio, a small, multi-purpose space for interactive seminars and other science and computer related presentations. As an Apple fan, I'm happy to see multiple iMac terminals here. Just behind it is the Discovery Center, as a replacement on Expedition to Seabarn's usual Grand Salon. The only downside to that space is its single level seating with no slope which can make it difficult to view what is on the lower portion of the screens during daily briefings. Here is also where Seaborn's new president, Natalia Leahy, warmly greeted guests on our special president sailing, but most remarkably for an expedition ship where the entertainment offerings. Showcase guest musicians like the CH2 guitar duo were phenomenal, and much more than you usually see entertainment-wise on expedition cruises. Also intriguing were cultural guests, and even the Liars Club, a perennial cruise travel favorite game show, was hosted one night, including all of its usual wordplay hilarity, being the main gathering level, Deck 4 is also where the onboard shop is located, and it's very well stocked, with any expedition gear you may still need to purchase, as well as a selection of fine jewelry, toiletries, books by the expedition staff, and music from the featured guitar duo, and of course, cute plush puffins, and central to it all is the lovely lodge-like expedition lounge, which acts as a perfect place to rest and relax, not merely queue while standing as on other ships before or after adventures outside the ship, and its design, highlighting faux fireplaces on either end, with comfy furniture in between, is just wonderful. Heading down just one level from the Expedition Lounge to Deck 3 takes you directly to Venture's landing zones and Zodiac Embark platforms, where boots are stored and can be donned before and cleaned after rib rides to shore or otherwise. And with that, it's time to highlight the expeditions themselves for an opportunity to get off the ship for the first time. Speaking of which, the exterior of Seabarn Venture is super cool looking, not only for its more angular look, but also for its unique dark forest green hull color. Descending the stairs from the landing zone lobbies takes you to the Zodiac Embark platforms for included cruises as we experience Greenland on just a magnificent sunny day, coming in at an extra cost however as kayaking. But given what we saw that morning, it's easy to see why it's absolutely worth the expense. There really is something about being right at water level in a polar destination to truly get a very unique perspective. It was definitely fun to play follow the leader kayak style and then later reboard our zodiac and tow the kayaks for a period of time as we went closer to explore the face of a glacier before returning back to the ship and seeing it again from a very dramatic angle. We had the chance to also tour the special hangars where the ship's pair of submarines are stored the seven-passenger U-Boat Works models, with three guests each on either side, and a pilot in the center. As you would expect, submarine dives themselves are also an added cost. But how often do you get to say you dove 387 feet down to the sea floor? It's a bit cramped, but comfortable enough for the under an hour duration. The views while diving get darker and darker, and increasingly otherworldly. Even if not a whole lot comes immediately into view, the whole diving process is really quite fascinating. Once we reach the bottom, we discovered the likes of sea squirts before spotting an Atlantic wolffish who woke up to our laser pointer to say hello. Altogether, the proximity to the seascape made it feel like the submarine voyage at Disneyland, only for real. 
But alas, we did not see any mermaids nor sea serpents. However, on our ascent in the bubbles, we did find colorful and sparkling bioluminescent jellyfish. Before one final quick and kinetic resurfacing. Another complimentary experience off the ship is of course the polar plunge, seen in slow motion as participants, including my cousin, went for the super chilly but also invigorating jump. As far as other tours went, it was always a pleasure to see our beautiful ship from afar, as we further explored ashore. As in Sisimiut, where a chromatic display of architecture, juxtaposed against the rugged mountainside, appeared like something straight out of a scenic jigsaw puzzle. and a serene lake was most peaceful. Seeing the husky-like Greenlandic dogs was a treat as well. While some were sleeping, others stayed awake and alert with stunning white eyes. Meanwhile, intricate rock carvings represented other local marine life and this otherwise quaint town. And always our home away from home was venture never too far away. Then in Kinger's something something sec, I had a blast discovering what remains of an abandoned former fishing port. It once had its heyday back in the mid-1900s, and has now been fully deserted since 2009. As a lover of industrial archaeology, and all things mysteriously left behind, I was surely in my element here. It really is amazing just how far into disrepair everything has fallen in 14 years from what looked to be an old school auditorium of sorts, to even the remains of a dilapidated, broken up piano. If you're interested in seeing even more of this fascinating footage, I edited an extended short film that you can click over to at the link right here. Showing much more life by comparison was Brado Lead. Again with breathtaking views off the ship. And the chance to see even more local animals, from sheep, to horses that my cousin enjoyed feeding and what's left of famed Eric the Red's estate and colony. Given my own orange beard, I think maybe I should now go by Jason the Red. In any case, it's always interesting to explore historical ruins, especially ones in a unique, unexpected polar region. Furthermore, when we made it back to Iceland and Jaime, we went on the lookout for puffins and found more sheep and mostly seagulls before coming upon this fella and his buddy hiding in the grass. But then I think he realized he must have left something behind and went back to retrieve it. Thankfully, there were many more floating in the water below to scope out as well. Once we returned to Reykjavik, the architecture became modern again including the contemporary concrete Lutheran church and other colorful edifices. But since Iceland is a destination for waterfalls, we had to check out some more. Particularly beautiful on this outing was Barnafoss and its multiple terraces of flowing water. The surrounding turbulent flows were also captivating. But the falls themselves were of course the highlight. Now to conclude with our seaborne venture pros and cons. The things we disliked as pains in the aft are the sweet showers that are small by current standards, the uninspired spa facilities and lack of Thomas Keller cuisine, blocked bow views of the Ford Lounge, and also the cluttered Zodiac placement. But what we most liked, and can take a bow, are the otherwise awesome forward deck and especially Bowsbury. Great entertainment for an expedition ship, and it's mostly all-inclusive nature, both onboard and off. Thanks so much for watching. If you would, as it really does help support us, please like this video with a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, while hitting that bell icon to be notified of new videos, watch our other ones, and visit popularcruising.com.